What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to look at searching for different news articles in our news app. So this video is a bit of a continuation from the part where we built this news app out. However, you can also follow along if you, you know, just haven't watched that part. So here's what we're going to be extending. So we've got a search bar here and I can search for events or, uh, you know, topics. So let's say I search for Google and hit enter and boom, we have all these uh, Google related articles and we can even, of course, tap into them and see the respective story as you would imagine should happen. And, uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll take a look at building out the search functionality with the API and uh, hooking it all up to our UI here. So if that sounds good, make sure you start by absolutely destroying that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. If you're into iOS and Swift, hit subscribe while you're at it. Let's get into the video. All right, we're going to pick up exactly where we left off in the other part. So let me go ahead and open up our project here and we're going to open up the Xcode project. So the simulator here is showing basically where we have left off where you can go ahead and open the app and you'll see basically top headlines for the country that we're using here, which is the US. And like you saw in the beginning here, we're going to accomplish adding a search bar so we can actually get relevant results that we care about. So in the browser here, I've already got the page opened up. The news API that we're using has a endpoint to search for stuff. You can provide a query here. We've provided Apple. We are also providing uh, a sorted by parameter to sort by popularity. But I'm going to basically take this and uh, we're going to drop it into our API caller and we're going to allow a user to use a search bar to enter in some some query text. So here I'm going to go ahead and say that a search uh, URL is going to be let's call it a string actually uh, basically this guy right here. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is let's go ahead and just add the uh, query parameter at the very end here. So I'm going to say and Q equals and in the actual implementation that we're going to add down here, we're essentially going to pass in what the query text is. So if we take a look at the response, it's actually the same as what we were getting for the top headlines. So what we could actually do is we can take this whole thing here and we can actually copy and paste it for the sake of brevity and simplicity. And we can go ahead and say this is search uh, with query and query will be a string. And basically now what we want to go ahead and do is first create our URL string. So we're going to go ahead and say uh, that the URL string is going to be constants and we're going to use the search endpoint and we're basically going to tack on the query parameter that we're passing in and before we do even this what we can actually do is we can say guard that the query uh, trimming all the white spaces isn't empty so in other words if the user just enters in a bunch of spaces we know that that's probably not going to return any results so we can just return there and we probably want to call the completion handler, which we'll do momentarily. But first, let's go ahead and use this URL string to instantiate a URL object passing in the string like that. And everything else down here actually is uh, not going to change at all. So we could clean this up and consolidate the code, but I'll just leave it as such for now. But let's go ahead and uh, change the simulator to our 12 Pro Max here and jump back to our view controller. So at the moment, we don't have a search bar in the UI and there's a couple ways we can go about adding one. We can use a search controller or we can just add a search bar as a title view item here. So both approaches are perfectly fine. It's you know entirely up to you which one you want to use. We can maybe use the search controller here. Both of them need a little bit of cleanup at some point, but we'll just start with that. So I'm going to say create search uh, bar. Maybe we'll call the function here at the bottom of view did load and we can go ahead and create this here. All right, just like that. Now up here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, have an instance of our search VC. So I'll say search VC is going to be a UI search view controller. Let's see. This is a UI search container view controller, and we're going to pass in for the search controller. Let's see. Uh, looks like we don't actually want a container controller. What I want is a search controller. Let's see if I can find it. 
this one right here with a result controller and the results controller we're going to pass in is nil. So basically, instead of having a search results controller, we're just gonna filter out our table view here based on the results that we get back from our search. So now that we have the search VC defined, here I can go ahead and say uh, navigation controller dot search display controller is now what we want. We actually want, let's see if I can find what it was. I think it's on the navigation item. Let's see, search controller. Yep, this is what I'm looking for is search VC. And the other thing that we're gonna go ahead and do on here is say on the search controller, it's search bars delegate should be self. This will basically allow us to get the event when the user taps on the search button in the keyboard. So we wanna go ahead and conform to the search bar delegate here. And at the very bottom, I'm gonna add a single function that we care to uh, implement here. And it's going to be uh, search did uh, tap search or something like that. Let's see if I can find it. So did end editing, that's not what we want. Selected scope, let's see. That's not what we want either. So let's, let's see which function we want. There's search bar cancel button, search bar, here we go. This is what we want, search bar search button clicked. Don't know why they use clicked, it should be tapped, kind of bugs me, but whatever. So what we can do in here is we can actually get the text of the search bar. So I can go ahead and say guard let text is going to be uh, our search bar dot text. And we are already validating uh, in the uh, API caller that the text is uh, you know not nil, but we can also check it here. It never hurts to check it twice. And for now, let's go ahead and just print out our uh, text of our query. So let's go ahead and give this a run and make sure that we both have a search bar showing at the top and that we are able to get the results of whatever we're typing into it printed out to the console. So bear with my simulator here. Hopefully we get a search bar, fingers crossed, holding my breath any day. Simulators love to be slow whenever they know that I'm doing videos, because why not? Why would they work for YouTube? So let's go ahead and be patient here. There it is. Awesome. We've got a search bar up here, too. I can click on it, and it gives us a nice search UI. It animates, and I can search for maybe, like, Apple. And when I hit uh, Enter, or if I hit uh, in the keyboard, if I can get the keyboard to pop up here, Let's go ahead and hit Command K. I can go ahead and hit uh, Enter here. We can see that nothing actually uh, appears, and the reason is because we're not calling the API, but we can see down here that we do have Apple showing up. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to call the API caller, shared, and we're gonna pass in uh, text for our uh, query. And for this completion handler, it's actually going to be identical to the completion handler we use up above. So what we could actually do, because we're slightly lazy, is we're gonna copy this whole block up here and I can actually paste it right down there. And all of this stuff will be identical. So just to read through the code, we're basically in the success case gonna hold onto the articles, we're gonna create view models out of them, we're gonna tell the table view to reload itself, and in the failure case, we're just gonna print out the error. So Pretty straightforward, nothing too fancy going on. We're just duplicating code. You might want to consolidate for better practice, but uh, you know, not the worst thing in the world. So let's go ahead and search for Apple here. We can hit enter and now we have uh, all the different uh, stories about Apple here. So uh, one thing you'll notice is that this actually dims out when we're in the search uh, kind of UI which is expected because we're supposed to have like a search controller. So there's two ways you can go about uh, handling this. One thing is you can go and dismiss on the search VC so it actually animates back down, or you can go ahead and create a search results controller. I've got a dedicated video on that, but let's see if I can remember how we can dismiss the search VC. So I believe there is a dismiss on here that we should be able to call just like that. And let's see what that gives us. I think what'll also happen is the search bars text will get cleared, which is not ideal. However, oh, it doesn't get cleared. Look at that, even better. So now after you've searched, we can come in and uh, scroll down here. So let's say we wanna find the latest news about, I don't know, let's find some news about YouTube. Why not? And let's see what's going on with YouTube. So Google goes nuclear against uh, Roku apparently here. So yeah, let's click into one of these and make sure it opens up. 
how to fix your YouTube audio problems. Well, hopefully we don't have any of these. So let's go ahead and tap on this and make sure it opens up the correct article, which it definitely does. And uh, there you have it. That's how you can add search functionality into our news app. So the API here, I'll just call out not this particular endpoint, but they do have uh, newsapi.org, many other endpoints. So you can actually build a pretty full featured news application uh, pretty easily. So let me know down below if you extend the app. I would love to check it out if you share the code like on GitHub or a part of your portfolio or something like that. If all, that's all I got for you guys today. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to smash that like button if you haven't done so already. Hit subscribe if you're into iOS and Swift to stick around. Channel growth is pretty good. I'd like to keep it going onwards and upwards. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next one.